Okay, guys, we are back on Sonic Revolution, and we got the uh, the people from Sage uh, here with us tonight or today, uh, depending on where you're in the world you are. So I'm going to uh, turn this over to the others and let them introduce themselves and take it away, Sage. Yep. All right. Uh, All right then. Well, uh, this is hey, this is Rum. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves very quickly, but for now, uh, for all the for all that missed, yes, Sage is happening this year as always, and yeah, we even have a teaser trailer ready to show off. So, welcome to our panel, by the way. So, let's start. Sorry. Enjoy your stay. Um, no, yes, no, 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 but it's fine if you can hear it. Oh, it's because you have to click on the Discord. <laughs> yeah, it's very quiet. Yeah, it's very quiet. Yeah. Alright. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, well, uh, let's meet the team. Um, we're missing one of our, our crew members tonight today, but it's fine. We'll just introduce him first. His name is Pedro. Uh, he's been a long time uh, an admin for Sonic Frankwood's headquarters, and often or not helps out with a lot of things with the Sage. As you can tell, he's a 2D, 2D, 2D artist. He loves Seinfeld, and, well, you know, he's a Brazilian by now. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. sometimes funny, too. He could be yeah. fun, especially he's when quite, uh, He's quite the comical individual. Yes. Pretty much so. Scarlet? <clears throat> well, um, I'm Scarly. Uh, I'm the PR manager for SFDHQ. Um, you might have seen a few of the tweets through Sage or through the account itself. Uh, those were most likely made by me. Uh, other than that, I'm just your local Dutchman. Uh, it's funny that time zones were mentioned, uh, considering the fact that it's about one in the morning over here, as I'm uh, talking about myself. <laughs> So it's very funny. Okay. Other than that, oh, sorry. Uh, other than that, uh, a lot of people see me as a talking fan game encyclopedia because I have a lot of knowledge on that sort of things. And uh, there's most likely a chance in the past few years that you might have seen my level design around in some of the projects that you might have played through uh, in Sage. Mm -hmm. Cough, cough. Right. Can, can, I, can I go? Uh, yeah? Yeah. All right, Val, uh, uh, introduce yourself, man. It's, time you're t it's your time to talk. Um, yeah, hello there. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Valif. Uh, also, people call me as well. I am also a PR manager for Sony Park Game HQ. I'm, I'm from Russia. Um, I, I'm basically, hey, I'm helping... Uh, to the, to the community uh, since uh, 2012. Um, basically, staying around, uh, having some good time with, with the friends, and uh, playing some Sonic fan games, of course. Uh, actually, I have seen a lot of them, so... Uh, by... And, and this year, uh, and especially last year, was uh, at Sage where in two thousand twelve. Um, and well, what else to say? Did you know that like the, the crocodile is a very cool and interesting character? <laughs> <laughs> I feel that Vector is cool. I like Vector. Yeah, he <laughs> has nice. a lot of potential. Yeah. All right. Can I move on? All right. All right. Let's move on. And this is me. Hey, it's Rum. What's up? Uh, I'm a PR manager for Sonic Dominion's headquarters. Um, as you can tell, I got a fluffy afro. I mean, hey, comes to the territory. Gotta be funky, right? Uh, I've been working on Sage for last three years, I think, now. It has already explained it. Uh, I can't see. Uh, don't worry. Um, I'm currently working on assets and building up everything that's been made. Everything you see here today is pretty much was made like by my hands. I'll, up to the ninth up to the ninth hour. 
I love food. I especially love teens. And uh, for some of the people who don't get it, I will super bore my after the addiction. Anyways, let's move on. Mm -hmm. uh, greetings. Uh, I'm Snick. Yes stands for nothing, so folks just call me Nick. Uh, I'm a moderator for SFGHQ, and I am the staff's uh, local uh, cartoonist, or as I wrote here, cartoonist. I like drawing cat characters. They're very fun, uh, goofy rubber hose characters. Uh, I'm a sucker for Sonic 1, if you see me on Twitter, um, which you probably have. And uh, I do a lot of escapades, inc including uh, the uh, dreaded Santiago. Um, I love to share my ideas with the world, and I love to contribute to SFGHQ, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, yep. Uh, and one more thing, I uh, just should probably thank the stream. Uh, thank you, Sonic Remix, for letting us be a part of this the, of this convention this year. Just, you know, FYI. Yes. Okay, so let's get going. All right. So, what is Sage? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I knew too. I mean, you know. Hmm. So, it's not like it's been around for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Scarly, let's go. <clears throat> All right. So SAGE stands for the Sonic Amateur Games Expo, um, which, as it may sound, is an online expo uh, meant to showcase fan games and indie games alike. Uh, uh, it occurs on a yearly basis that is held by SFGHQ, uh, also known as Sonic Fan Games HQ. Um, and pretty much, um, this has been a tradition for about uh, 20 or so years at this point. Um, games submitted to Sage are readily accessible towards the website, uh, made yearly for the expo. Uh, but for some unbeknownst reason, it tends to uh, crash on opening day. Um, it's, a, it's a very uh, common joke that has uh, plagued the site. Um, since the dawn of man. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so every year, for some and holy reason, the site crashes. And, um, often or not, um, a server host currently, uh, I think his name is Perfect Chaos Zero, often or not warns everyone every year, or has, has always has to complain to his, um, to his clients regarding, like, how his complaints from his client, like, the people he's paying for servers, that overloads everyone because everyone is flooding in for the day of, of Sage, like during the first few hours. So it makes it impossible for anyone to place like any of the new titles and new submissions that came out this year. So it's often a tradition at this point that often not the site will crash. So I would say for this year also, it will crash. So get ready for that. Let's move because on. The hype. That to because yeah. the hype is real. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of people. And for who those that are already Sage. submitting their game, uh, I think it would be best if you also uh, release a mirror link in case the site does go down, so we can collect that uh, during yep. the event. Ishio uh, drive our good old mirrors for that. Yeah. Anyways, that so shall we go uh, take a trip down memory lane and talk about how Sage began? Uh, so, Sage was originally created by uh, Ryan Bloom, uh, most likely known under the uh, internet alias Blaze Hedgehog. You might have heard of him through some of his other projects, like uh, Mario Blue Twilight DX, who was a big name back in the day as well. Um, but he started Sage back in 2000 uh, to show a more positive image of fan games and to give developers a progress deadline. Because uh, even back then, uh, fan games were kind of infamous for not getting completed, and Sage kind of gave everyone that push to actually get something out for the event so that people can actually play them and to make sure that they can also progress on their end. Um, earlier Sages uh, occurred on either a biannual or a few months in between sort of ordeal, uh, but since 2005 has... Uh, slowly and gradually uh, turned into a proper annual event. Um, though, uh, from Blaze Hedgehog, Smidge, and Perfect Chaos Zero, Sage has, has held various hosts 
uh, that prep the year, uh, that prep all the events over the years. 20 years later, uh, Sage still remains an expo for fan games, but uh, as of late, uh, I think I'd say since about 2016, even though uh, we always really welcomed it, uh, we've been starting to push and promote indie titles even more so. Uh, it's very important to get your name out there, and Sage is probably one of the best springboards to make that happen. And a lot of the indie titles that have featured that have been featured at Sage, like Freedom Planet and uh, other games like Adelin, uh, are already out on consoles, and you can pick them up right now. So it's always awesome to see uh, an indie game. Uh, being represented at Sage and having them be available for console later on. Uh, stuff like um, Anton Ball as well, uh, which is available on the Switch, I believe. Really cool stuff. Um, and as I mentioned, Sage used to be a one-man job, uh, but has since also turned into a collaborative, uh, collaborative effort over the last decade. Um, last year alone, had over 100 plus submissions and the largest few attraction in its 20 year lifespan. I believe the estimate isn't even close. Uh, last year was probably about over 200 entries that were submitted. Yeah, it was bonkers. absolutely bonkers how yeah, was, many people insane. were so invested and interested in the medium. And it's, it's very appalling for us over here to see the growing impact that Sage has. Um, and what's even better is submitting for Sage itself is relatively easy. Uh, just sign, if you just sign up on SonicFanGamesHQ.com and set up a draft for approval later on, you can most likely get in uh, really easy. Uh, from streamers showcasing their entries to being be able to talk about your own titles and other people's titles, over on our Discord server and other Discord servers, events, real life, Sage is always a very busy time, and it's always very exciting to see. All right, it's time for me to take the wheel. <laughs> it's time for the fun part. Ooh. So, um, often or not, every year of Sage has had a lot of things happen behind the scenes. There's a lot of things that people talk, things happen, we, uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we, collaborate. we collaborate. You collaborate. We create uh, wonderful, amazing things, articulate it, and, and yeah. push it out, you know, into a final product. Yeah. That looks absolutely magnificent and beautiful. Look at that Heck behind yeah. the scenes, right? It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. The, the, the blue, the, the red, and the yellow, right? It's got a... Okay, okay, you guys get the point. Anyways, um, yeah, I did that in like half an hour. <laughs> so, uh, let's move on with, uh, there's no sound, the logo. This logo uh, took a little bit of time to work on. A little. A little <laughs> bit, yes. Um, so, when I was deciding on, when like the whole team and everyone was talking about like deciding on the art direction for this year's stage, uh, Nick proposed something like this on the left. The thing that I'm not gonna explain it. I'll be honest with you. Listen. You, you want me to explain it? No, no, no. So basically, Nick wanted to harken back to a certain style from the first Sonic game, specifically in the box art. And often or not, he also decided to base the logo for this year's stage. And at least a snippet of that is what turned out to this, turned into what you see here. Um, yeah. But I wonder who could that be on the on the right side of the image? <laughs> that arm looks very familiar and very funny. I wonder who it could be. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, let's not think about it too much. Let's move on. So, um, a month or two passed by. We, I looked over it and I worked on it on and off. And uh, this is what's the result of the fruit of my labor. Um, I brought this to life after after Nick put the layout together to make me to work for me to work on it. I'm I'm pretty I'm pro I'm quite proud of how this turned out by the way. It went through a lot of revisions, didn't it? It it did. It went through like some like a lot, variations. A lot. 
they, yeah. went, they, they went through some weird adjustments with the way numbers. So Pedro, Pedro went a little ham on, on like feedback, and I'll tell you that I don't regret that. I, weren't I, you gonna? I, I, huh? Weren't you gonna change the color at one point of the of the yes. octagon? Or it the, was supposed. The... To, it was supposed to be green at, at first, but I changed it to yellow and kept it to the original like Sonic, Sonic one. Box. I think that was a good decision. I think it was a good decision. It really I popped. Agree. I agree. I did yeah. add alter. I did add an alternative blue one. Because it was back then, like, because mm -hmm. it was uh, in, into the press into the media kit. So yeah, it's in the press kit, isn't it? Yes, the blue one. It's got like a blue one. Yeah. So let's move on. Uh, so <laughs> in the beginning of the of the panel, you guys might have seen this teaser trailer that I set up back in March. Yes. Um. And uh, I'll tell you this, production on this took about a week, just a straight week of just after Pedro passed me the, the, the model, I had to set it up on Blender and put it all together. And I'll tell you this, from the moment that I set this up the way it is in this image, it already started bugging out crazy. Like, there was, <laughs> there was some crashes, I was wondering what the heck was going on, what was I supposed to do, but eventually I kind of sorted it out and I kind of gave up. So I just did my work, and, you know, rendering this whole thing took about eight hours, but it took a lot more because I had to render a lot of specific frames where the, the, whole, the animation itself would bug out, and then like one of the screens would just go dark, or one of the screens would just go pure white for some reason, and it was just really, really annoying, and I'll tell you this, it was very annoying. Um, I am so sorry I came up with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Nick, sometimes I sacrifice my sanity for your creativity. I mean, I mean, it was a cool idea, you gotta admit, and it came it out was. really nicely. It did, but I sacrificed a bit of my sanity to make this work. <laughs> yeah, a bit of my computer's, computer's strength. I definitely heard my computer crying a few times. Sometimes, oh, you gotta, sometimes you gotta go a little bit crazy in order to make something great, that's for yep. sure. And, um, uh, and the image you see on the on the left is actually the the 480 um, frame from the animation itself. So take a glance at it. This is the original frame. <laughs> Isn't this right before it shuts off, or is it like nearing right, it? Right, right before it shuts off. Right before it shuts off. God, that hmm. was a that was a great uh, point. I really emphasized that, right? Yes, you did. Like so much so that I was just like nagging you all my moves. Yeah. You were. <laughs> Everyone, everyone involved was nagging at me. Uh, but but you're but you're our lovable friend, that's for sure. You you make some amazing stuff, Rami. Thanks, thanks, Nick. Uh, so the monitor teaser. So the story behind this is that when back in February, um, when we were originally discussing the idea of making the teaser trailer, uh, I I asked Pedro to set up a CRT monitor for us. What he came out with was a uh, a literal CRT monitor, and not a CRT TV, has. <laughs> Yeah, I, I said TV monitor. It was a weird, like, lost in translation thing. But, yes. I mean, like, it was a great, I think, in, in retrospect, it's a great transition from what we were previously doing, which is kind of like um, early, almost early 2000s kind of this look. early, like, 2000s kind of yeah. vibe that was originally planned uh, and kind of, like, reverting yeah. back into the CRT, Cathay Tube, uh, television hey. set um, kind of display. Uh, Almost reminiscent to uh, some of the old marketing for uh, yeah. the first Sonic game, which was something I was really thinking of when pitching it to Remy. Uh huh. Uh, thankfully, at the end of the day, I made it work, and we thankfully ironed out the kinks before we proceeded with the teaser trailer without any miscommunication, and it, that's how the and that's how the teaser trailer turned out for a bit. So uh, for the next image, we have the full image itself. Check this out. <laughs> Pretty, I right? still love how uh, we kind of teased this. Oh, well, I kind of teased it by using an at everyone on the server for to make everyone <laughs> post CRT monitors. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. hilarious. Image. <laughs> oh, I remember that, that, that was, that was such a hilarious experience. I remember when we were like announcing. I was like, you know, I think. Uh, I don't know if it was you who pinged everyone first when we were dropping the teaser. Teaser was it? Mm. Like on the, both instances. 
Like it was, or no, wait, it was the trailer. Uh, I remember I made like a quip joke. It was like, guys, it's Sonic 1 2. Uh, I'm releasing <laughs> it. And everyone, everyone thought I was being serious, and it was great. <laughs> uh, some people took it very seriously. I mean, I mean like, the, the, whole, the whole theme of this year is, of course, because it's the 30th anniversary, the big celebration Sonic is, of Wolf. course, focusing on it. And, I mean, like, it, uh, um, it's kind of lucky that Sonic Origins got announced around this time, too, so yep. that it still kind of fits with that. It's, it, um, it still feels a bit relevant in, in that um, sense. All right, so we should probably get into it. All right. Uh, so, right, it's time yeah. for me to it's time for me to ad lib for like uh a good ten fifteen minutes. Um, you can do this. This is all we're on Cliff Notes, uh, so I'm kind of looking. So we're talking about the goal, and we're not just talking about the goal of Sage, but just overall as us and our motivations with SFGHQ as a site. And this is talking personally, and I think everyone in here can agree with this that SFGHQ, the vibe of it is to be a place that not only promotes uh Sonic fan game dev, but also game dev in general and just in general creativity. Um, we are a community that really much promotes growth, the growth of our members, the, the growth that our members help other members um, in order to achieve their dreams and create amazing, beautiful things. Um, I go into that server every day and I see talent um, throughout the, the wazoo. Uh, there's a lot of really passionate individuals, not just passionate about Sonic, but just passionate about sharing um, their love to the world, their creations. And that was actually the slogan that I come up with with Sage was express your love to the world, and that is a that that is a reason why I chose that was because I wanted that to be the focus, the focus of showing a piece of you to the world and showing a part of your creativity uh, and your intuition and out to the world um, and making something new and making something great um, and just watching other people take a look at it and have fun with it. Uh, that's what it's all about, really. It's, it's all about um, growth and all that. It's, it's quite a beautiful thing. And uh, I hope that with this, uh, with this little presentation we've got here, uh, you see snippets of that, uh, the creativity in staff, uh, that we want to promote the creativity outside of staff, and um, just overall build a bigger creative uh, community. Uh, if I can add anything else to this, I f often feel like, you know, there's a lot of communities out there, and they all have the same idea. They want to build bigger, like, help people and help everyone. I feel like the heart of it, Sonic Family Wars Headquarters, um, for me, and what I see in it, and what I'm always hoping to push, is to be a place where we can, where future game developers and future artists get to, like, people who can make things, and just creatives, and just also at the same time, just allow this space for people to communicate and have a friendly chat with each other, make connections, help yeah. each other out. Sure, yeah. there's, gonna be, sure there's gonna be rough times, but like, you know, at the end of the day, if they're all having fun, it's, it's all right, you know? Rough yeah. times are part of it at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you know? Right. Um, I already mentioned it prior, but the whole, like, the, the entire community is basically a springboard for a brighter future, in yeah. a sense. And, uh, that just alone makes it never boring for me to be around uh, SFGHQ and seeing Sage evolve to what it has become over the past few years. Yes. Yeah. So, lots of lots of talent. Lots of a lot people. of talent. And uh, yeah. Nick, what's up? Uh, I was gonna say, and um, after all this panel is, uh, just be sure to check us out. Uh, take a stop by okay. and uh, maybe show your stuff off. That's for sure. Yes. So mm -hmm. let's move on. I think it's finally time we can do this. Let's okay. get to it. Oh boy. It's Q&A time! Oh hey, boy! Yay. We're going to be answering questions for the next few minutes. For the next 10-ish uh, uh, ten, minutes. We have like 25 minutes. Uh, sorry, yes. Is, is anyone checking the stream chat, or do we... Uh... Uh, we, we, should, we should be checking the panel room text. So, and is room already text. Typing in... so if you guys have any questions, now is the time. Yeah, give us a shot. Uh... Favorite fan games. Oh, favorite fan games. Uh, fan games. Who wants yeah. to go first? Who wants to go first? Not me. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Come on, Ronnie. Fine. Uh, me. Just, dude, just say SRB two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, I'm actually not a big fan game person, but if I gotta say a fan game I really like, um, I can't remember which one I really like. Uh. 
It would actually be one of my two favorites would be actually Sonic after the sequel. Whoa, that's a good one. That's a really great one. The music oh, in there is phenomenal. I, love oh. I, I think Link did a fantastic job of back in the day. Uh, it definitely was a game changer. That's for sure. And uh, Robo Blast uh, Kart is also a favorite of mine as well. Mm. So, so what about you, Nick? What about you, Scarlet? Uh, do you go first? Do you do you want to go first, Scarly? Because I know I don't know because like I there's like I don't really have a favorite favorite, you know, one that I just pick up and play whenever. Uh, because like I invest my time in a lot of fan games. Uh, I guess in this instance, uh, some of the most that resonate with me are like most of the late 2000s fan game you, i immediately like the first thing that comes to my mind obviously is uh sonic nexus uh nice. which which of was course, uh, worked out by uh, some of the people who eventually worked on sonic mania so in that essence it's also a good like way to look at the community and look what the community has done uh mm. in this instance basically form what most people consider one of their favorite sonic games of all time and mm -hmm. it kind of just started during that time with uh, Retro Sonic and uh, eventually Sonic Nexus and all the merges that came in between all the house. Um, but what I think of the original uh, Labor Day demo uh, that came out on uh, September 2nd, 2008, I still remember the day. Uh, I, I just look back at like where I used to live uh, right next to the window, uh, having Sunset Shore blare out in my ears. And it, it it still kind of inspires me to this day, I feel, the most, out of, like, any fan game uh, I've played so far. <laughs> uh, I guess for me, uh, personally, I'm definitely a bit torn between a lot of really, really great uh, stellar creations that people in the community have made. Um, I am rather tied uh, between a recent, um, I guess, uh, recent edition uh, to our roster of fan games, uh, Sonic and Knuckles' new Tragic Panic is looking oh, up to be oh, one of the shit. greatest. Oh, whoa! Oh, it's looking, it's looking great. It's looking. It's, it's looking. It's oh, looking. Oh, I'm sorry. I cursed. I cursed. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, everybody. It's you might want to have censored that. You think? You think that? You think that that I would be the one to say it, but it would be you. But um, I'm, a, I'm a sailor. I'm sorry. But basically, uh, new Tragic Panic is looking out to be probably one of the coolest things known known there and i have a bit of a bias i'm friends with some of the people who are working on that and they're making something stellar it's uh like treasure like gunstar heroes mixed with sonic the hedgehog uh knuckles chaotix all of that in one big package and um you know i i can't wait for the, whenever uh they release something new from it because i'm i'm seeing the development of it i'm friends with people who are developing it. i'm in the server and it's some of the greatest stuff ever um, of course, there's others like SRB2, that's a no-brainer, and, um, Sonic oh, Overture. Really? Sonic yeah. Overture! Right, Sonic listen, Overture um, is amazing, it is a... It is amazing. It uh, is a very artistically well-rounded game. One of the people who worked on the pixel art for that is actually a staff in SFG. Yes, yeah, so, uh, um, we'll see her soon, don't worry. We'll see her. Uh, Pix and Pixels, uh, also known as Pixie. Uh, yes. Very talented pixel artist. The whole team is just really talented individuals. Really talented. They're also um, good friends, by the way. Especially Jeff. Jeff, yeah. Jeff yeah, if you're funny. watching this, if you're watching this, I don't know if you are. Uh, hope you're doing all right, bud. Um, Jazz, my homie. What's up, dude? Check it yeah, in. Check man. it out. We're gonna play some Mario Party. We're gonna have a good time as well. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, all right. Hi. Um, Val, do you have any favorites? I know you played a heck ton yeah. of them. Yes, I. Uh... I also have played a lot of game, and I also can say uh, about my absolute uh, favorite fan games. But um, maybe I, I, I especially would uh, mention uh, Sonic after the sequel and Sonic before the sequel because they are indeed where game changes for the community as all um i like some uh fan games with advanced style like sonic vs darkness or mm -hmm. chow is island 
I oh, see yeah. the yeah the beautiful games. Um, and uh, shout out to the to the creator, uh, Nefo first or Neko, <laughs> just in short. Um, Sonic Bob Blast 2, of course, one of my favorite games because it's an amazing game with uh, such an amazing uh, story and history of making is uh, really, really outstanding. Um, okay. And maybe um, I have uh, one favorite game that uh, is not just platformer but also a fighting one game. And uh, it's called Super Sonic Knockout. It's pretty old one, um, uh, yeah, but I really uh, like it. I like it. I like it that it has a really interesting concept. So it's funny how everyone uh, mentioned SRV two and I, I forgot about well, it's a, it's, it. it's a it's a staple. It's a staple. It's been around for twenty years. I mean, exactly. I know I've, I've 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 talked with some of the people who worked on that the 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 original people worked on it, and it it's so interesting the history of that game. So I just uh, I just feel bad for not mentioning it, considering the fact that. Uh, I've been playing that game since like the final demo era, so like oh, 2007. 1.09.4. That's uh, 1.09.4, baby. Yeah, I hate to break it to you guys, but we have more questions, and we should probably answer them before. Which is you are right. Uh, uh, which sage moment was hard? Um, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Awesome. We should probably go follow what based on what people are saying. So how are how are all y'all doing? Okay, well I'm doing fine. I wish I could be playing Final Fantasy 15 right now, but I'm here. <laughs> I just took a power nap before getting here. Uh, yeah, so. he did. I'm doing well, more than I'm flying at the moment. <laughs> I was streaming in this server, and I was playing Sonic 1 because someone told me to. And yeah. uh, I did skips in Scrap Brain 2. There's this weird cutscene skip, and I did it like twice. Scarly saw it. It was cool. It was incredible. I don't know how you even do it. Like, I talked with Vada. He does ROM hacking stuff. Vada Pega, he does ROM hacking stuff. Check out his Twitter, uh, by the way. Uh, really, really time talented person, but uh, I talked with him about it, and apparently it's like a frame-perfect thing. Very strange. Um, very interesting. But, uh, yeah. Val? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hello from the other side of the world. Apparently there's 4 a.m. in the morning. But, uh, I... Uh, yeah, different times. But yeah. I'm so I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. No need to be sorry, because I'm here. I feel all the energy... <laughs> uh, from the you guys and it's like from, a spirit bomb. From, yeah, yeah and from the local version from like Ball. Yeah. one. You know? Yes. We're here Hive representing the worldwide. Hive. Yeah. Hive is real. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hive is chilling, man. Within the staff. Gnarly. Yeah, man. Hi. Um, uh, thank you, Crafter, and thank you, Delius the Wolf, for the questions. So, Cadio2715 says Which Sage moment ha was heartwarming? Uh, I'll start, I'll, if I can start. Um, this is a bit personal. Um, I'll make it quick. So, um, back in Sage 2020, I was not a moderator of PR yet in, in this, this community, like Sonic Room's headquarters, but um, I went through a lot of a bouts of rough, rough bouts of situations with a lot of folks in terms of the way I, I handle myself with others. And I, um, uh, I would, let's just say that I was in a bit of a rough spot, but something happened, and I was able to work on the Sage 2020 trailer. Uh, I took that as my chance to redeem myself, I guess, in a way, and it seems like I, was, I managed to pull that off in seven hours. So the Sage 2020 trailer, that is 15 minutes long, was seven hours. Oh my god. All of that was seven hours. Like, take, take that in. And not just that, after that, that was fact, really quick. After the fact, I managed to... I put, pour my heart out to make the Sage intro to 2020, which, while looking back at it, I'm not too proud of at some point points. <clears throat> 2021, <clears throat> better, anyways. Uh, I'm very excited to do what I'm, what I'm doing to do this year, and I'm very proud of what I did last year with, with the people of last year, the old staff. And really I'm, nice they're all experience. my friends. They're all my friends, and I love them. My family. So, Scarly, what, what was heartwarming for you? Um, 
I promised that I wouldn't necessarily plug my project, but it was a heartwarming moment that happened during Hype of Sage, so I guess I gotta have to mention it now. Um, during uh, last year, uh, I was mainly a someone who actually just submitted their own entry for Sage. Um, uh, Sonic Mania mod in particular. Um, to which it was featured in the in last year's ginormous trailer uh, that was just uh, talked about. And uh, my little brother, uh, age nine at the moment, uh, he saw that snippet of gameplay footage and he went completely wild at the fact that Sonic went upside down on that stage. And that snippet was also used in the, uh, uh, the original trailer. Um, for context, this is uh, what I'm talking about is a Bit of a remake of, you guessed it, Sonic Nexus is a true, uh, like Sunset Shore Zone, uh, the game I just talked about. Uh, in that original Sage trailer for that, uh, during uh, Sage 2009 in particular, uh, when it was rerun for that event, uh, it also had that exact snippet of Sonic running upside down. I remember seeing that myself as a kid and being absolutely amazed by it. So, bit of a full circle moment. Everything just came full circle, for me. and I, I thought I, uh, I, I was like nearly circle. in tears all day. Aww. So we have, um, we have like we have nine minutes left. Which should be quick. Nick. Um. Well, I guess with um, my I guess Sage moment. Uh, I think it was the fact that Sage kind of. This isn't necessarily a Sage moment, but the fact that it was because of Sage that I was able to. Uh, I guess, envelop myself into this new community um, through a very comedic way at first. I was uh, server muted uh, because uh, I had a bad mic echo uh, in a call. It was it was with, um, I think, Neohazard and Lang were watching, like, some stand-up comedian uh, do some stuff, and I had bad mic echo. I got muted. Uh, I was muted for five months because I forgot. Uh, and I think it was um, basically, uh, it was like five months later, or so-and-so, when Sage happened, I was in a call uh, when it was happening, and I think, I don't know if it was PCO or someone else, uh, unmuted me uh, after that, and it was the funniest thing ever, and everyone just kind of laughed at that, but it was because of that that I um, gained new friendships, like almost immediately. And we just started talking, and it was funny because I remember PCS said, well, usually these calls kind of die out, um, or after Sage time, uh, usually most of the stuff's in text. Uh, it didn't. I made sure it didn't. <laughs> um, I had calls every day uh, when I was coming home from uh, high school at that time. I was still in high school. And um, it was some of the best things ever. Uh, we were the VC Friday boys, uh, or VC weekday boys, if you call it that. And it was some of the funniest stuff you could ever see. Uh, every night, every day, it was like checking in, like clockwork. And it was really fun. And I think it just goes to show how really close this community is. Val, uh, I hate to say it, you're going to have to probably get the video clip on this one. We're running out of time. I apologize. Val. Well, um, I wonder, can I mention... Uh... Uh, that one tweet uh, from Katie. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, she made she made one tweet uh, to support. Mm -hmm. uh, right. To support. That was yes, just your yes, that one tweet. Like uh, it was really uh, a good moment for me because uh, it was so good to see uh, such uh, such kind of support. Uh, I mean. Inspiration is uh, one of important case, one of, one of important case of crea creativity, and uh, we are absolutely happy to see and happy to know that we can uh, show some love and show some support uh, to Sonic uh, with with fan game projects. Yes. Um, I actually had Katie say good luck to me in Sonic Revolution in the great. back room a few days ago, and I will take her and say thank you, Katie, for that, by the way, in regards to the Sage uh, panel. So, yes, thank you. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, um, so, okay, so uh, I, I have one. There's, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, there's one question uh, through Twitch chat. Uh, yes, that my strike five. Like, this is a good one. Yes. This is so a really good one. one. It's currently only uh, only how only will to handle streaming scheduling oh. uh, with entries going bigger as the event gets more big. Uh, that is up to the streamers themselves. Uh, usually, uh, the streamers. Um, take like a, a small amount of time, maybe about 10 to 20 minutes on specific entries before moving on to the next one. It's more of a matter of what, how the streamer is going to handle that more so than uh, what the entries themselves are going to be. So there might be a chance where some entries might not be shown uh, on a stream, and that's that might be a bit unfortunate if, if it happens to be your entry that might not be shown, but uh, there, are very, there are many other opportunities for other people to do it as well. So. Okay. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, yep. Okay, go on. Strike, strike Force also asked regarding submissions and such. I cannot answer that right now, but if you want to ask that question, you can ask it in our Discord server later. Which okay. will do in a recap. So, Sonic Remix, do you have any questions for us right here? Physically, in voice. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's okay. understandable then. No problem. Sorry about that. Uh, there is okay. still I guess we'll another take, one. If we guess, we'll take uh, one more quick question. If, if you have to go. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are up for one more question real quick. Uh, no. What's one more? Hey, are you, uh, sure? DTW? Are, you, are you sure? I don't think you have enough time. Have to do because I think it's actually a very important thing to Fine. explain. Fine. Okay, Scarlett, you go. It's your turn. Uh, Right here in the stream, uh, on the panel room text, uh, mentions what are some uh, pieces of advice you can give to people who are thinking of making their own fan games? And I think that's a really interesting question for uh, uh, Nick, myself, and Oh, yeah, that's, that's okay, Asta. That. Sorry, I feel bad for this people on that. Yo, Dai. Shout out to Dai. He's a cool guy. Yo, Dai. He's, he's, he's a regular in the server. Guy's a legend. What's good, man? Um, but, uh, what do you think? What do I think? I think um, it kind of just depends on what you're making. Uh, if you're aiming for the 2D stuff, it's always great to just take a look down uh, memory lane and kind of just get deep into it. Um, learn from peers, learn from the source material, uh, take a look into it, uh, figure out the quirks and the gameplay and all of that, and have fun with it too. Uh, be creative. Um, creativity leads to really neat things. Um, and, uh, you know, we show no bias for any neat project that's ca- that comes through uh, our doors, pretty much. Um, Sage is open for everyone, and yeah, not uh, just fan games, but indies and all that other stuff too. If you got anything, you want to you want to get your ROM hack in there? Sure, go ahead. Uh, and put your ROM hack in there. Engine go right test. ahead. Throw that in. Uh, you want to like show off uh, what you've been doing on real hardware, maybe like some homebrew stuff? Go right ahead. You can, right you can, ahead. Put, you can put that in. Uh, yeah. if, if I could say anything about like uh, fan games, also it's also about scope. Know know how well you can do something. In oh game. yeah, Build scope too. Up. Start. It start is small. very important. Uh, start small and then kind of work your way up as you get more comfortable. Kind okay. of uh, just kind of get in a growth area, but don't go overload yourself. Don't go too ambitious, especially if it's your first project. Uh, <laughs> especially early on. In your don't be. Project. Don't be. Uh, the, don't um. Yeah, don't get too over ambitious, basically. Uh, also, do not be the idea guy. That's what I was going to yeah. mention. Also, yeah. a very important thing. Yeah, kind uh, of. Gotta, figure yeah, things so. out. Okay. So, with that, you guys, we're done. We're wrapping up. Yeah. So, uh, oh boy. Um, let's do a recap before we head out. So, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Nick, it's your turn. Oh boy, it's my turn to do the recap. It is my turn to do the recap. And do uh, the recap. S- <laughs> Sage 2021, it is happening August 21st to August 27th. Uh, mark your calendars, boys and girls of all ages, because that's when it's happening. Deadlines for submissions for the expo end on August 8th, 2021, um, at 11.59 p.m. Uh, I think it's Pacific <laughs> Daylight Time. Um, yes. So, Eastern Gang, you got a few more... <laughs> Uh, hours in a sense. Uh, you you don't got till midnight. You ain't no Cinderella. Uh, you 
<laughs> you, you've got a little bit extra time, but keep that in mind. And don't be afraid if you're a little bit too delayed to just uh, kind of rethink things. Mm -hmm. um, it is perfectly fine. Do not break yourself with this deadline. That's for sure. Please don't um, crunch. Do not crunch. Crunch is really bad. You cannot um, make it. You cannot make it. And if it's but, we un but we understand, and that's okay. Reminder that SFGHQ has a showcase page. So you can showcase it at any time, anywhere. It's not just Sage. Um, deadlines for the Sage trailer end at July 11th at, of course, 11.59 Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, and, and I'll be the one handling all of it, so please follow submi the submission rules. And That's exactly three weeks from now. Uh, right? Yes, yep. uh, this three is coming weeks. up a little earlier, so if you really want to be on this trailer, I'd recommend you get to it now if, you, if you're listening right now. Thank yep. you. All right. And um, finally, the last, the second last panel. Okay. Do yep. I, do yes. I keep going? Okay. So it's time for the social uh, lightning round. Okay. So you can keep uh, up at us uh, at uh, Twitter uh, at Sage Expo, of course, for Sage, and at Sonic. Uh, well, at SFGHQ official, which is Sonic Fan Games HQ official. Um, at Sage, we'll put all the updates for Sage stuff in there, and SFGHQ retweet stuff. We also post some neat stuff about fan games and other interesting things that you think you might like, especially game devs and artists out there who are really interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, website is, of course, sonicfangameshq.com. It is well, a no-brainer, so to speak. And the Discord link is right there. I'm not going to say it because it's really complex, but it's unconventional for a Discord link, but trust me. Uh, DC Railgun that works at 8B6YU9KDAF. <laughs> Just go on. Just go on the site. The site has a Discord go on the site, link. Go on the media. You'll see the link there. It's a bit wacky. It. It's a it's a bit wacky, but the whole point is to just uh, stop from uh, sus suspect people and yes, you know sus uh, weird sus alt accounts and all that from coming in there. Yeah, don't be um, sussing So that can you? Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I can mention one more thing, uh, because it's probably yes. going to be asked the first thing. Um, if you are submitting and you're not sure about updating or not, please do not worry. Uh, as long, like even during the event week, uh, during August 21st to 27th, you are able to update your work at any moment uh, as you please. Yes. So, so very, it was very important that I get that out in case uh, yes. people are going to start asking about that. Soon. Yeah. So uh, patches and, more, and all that can be there. Hmm? Yeah. Any more questions would be also on this. You could be answering. You can answer on Discord on Twitter. If yeah. you ever want to send us anything. We so, might do a call in the Discord itself um, yeah. at some point. Uh, after this panel, probably Rummy and I, maybe Scarly if he's not dead. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and Val is just Val is just disintegrated at this point. There's no yeah. saving him. Absolute <laughs> legend. A true uh, hero. All right, I'm so... What legend am I, but... So, uh, with that, you guys, I should probably use you guys as a, as a final hint. Regarding the Sage intro, the first or to see a little bit of theming for this year's Sage. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for coming to the event, everybody. Uh, this has been Rummy, Rummy SM. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the Parliament of Funk. You know all that jazz. Uh, Scarly here. Uh, say, say something good about yourself. Oh, quippy. Say something good. Sonic Legends. Okay. And Nick, what about you? Uh, Sonic One or SRB One? I don't know. <laughs> and Val. I don't know. Find the computer room. <laughs> Find the computer room. <laughs> you found it. Nice. You found it all right. And uh, uh, also, th a special thank you to uh, Pix and Pixels for, for this right. Yep. And we'll see She's you at the event. Yep. Take see care, you everybody. We'll be on the Discord. Bye. See you around. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, that was uh, Sage. Uh, coming up next, we got the crew from Sonic Legacy doing their panel, so please stay tuned.